Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaped it down. Basically, you will end up with a haircut shape up or an edge up. What they do is they tattoo small dots that look like hair follicles in the areas where you have lost your hair and then blend it with your existing hair. You can even choose what type of hairline you want, hard shape up or soft and natural finish. And to maintain it, all you gotta do is shave your hair every few days, which is something you already were probably doing anyway. So if you wanna get this hook up for my brothers out there in the UK and Europe, make sure you check out The Scalptist on Instagram. And for my brothers out there in the States, make sure you go ahead and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. And when you go on their pages, you can see for yourself what these guys look like before. I mean, these guys are literally hair magicians. I've never seen anything like this before, but all I can tell you guys is this is a serious game changer for us men. So make sure you get in contact with Scalptus and Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. Hi, it's Minnie. You're watching Don Shea Box of Nation. <laughs> Devin Haney, your father done said something, and he might have got you in some shit, show. 35, I'm coming. Lil' Ryan Garcia, shorty, you can get your little ass beat too. You know what I'm saying? Tank, what's up, show? Like, come see, matter of fact, come, come, come follow me. Let me show y'all something. playing with me. I'm coming to 35. It's real, y'all better get y'all shit together. Quarantine about to be up. Y'all better hope this quarantine shit keep coming. Cause when I come out, I'm coming out like a fucking monster. See me, tell you. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So you seen that clip that I just played for you, Gary Russell, he's calling everybody out at 135. Yeah, that was back in April of this year. You see he even jumped on a weight scale to show you that he's very comfortable at 135. See, for those of you guys trying to say Gary Russell is too small for Devin Haney, et cetera, et cetera, what you guys have to understand is usually when a fighter is too small for the weight class, he'll move up to a higher weight class, and then right after that, he'll go right back down to his natural weight class. This is the reason why when Floyd Mayweather would fight at 154, he would only do it just for Canelo when he fought at 152 and Oscar De La Hoya, when he had to fight at 154, then he comes back down to his natural weight class. When Guillermo Rigo, when he fought, when he moved up two weight classes to fight against Loma, right after that fight, he went all the way back down to his natural weight class. Another example is when Manny Pacquiao went to 154 to fight Antonio Margarito, right? He goes back down to 147. And then you have the fighters that move up like Gary Russell or like a Mikey Garcia, where they move up and they stay there at that division. Mikey stayed at 147, and then he ended up dominating Jesse Vargas, one of the biggest welterweights. In fact, Jesse Vargas originally wanted that fight at 154 because he was too big for 147. So this proves Mikey Garcia's loss to Errol Spence had nothing to do with size. There was a skill disparity in that fight, and that was the way Mikey Garcia explained the loss in the post-fight press conference when he explained why he lost. He only talked about Errol Spence's skill, his timing, his defense. He said nothing about size. So with Gary Russell walking around at 145, and he was probably even heavier than that before he started training, that means there will be no excuses if he were to lose to someone, at least there won't be any size excuses. Let me clarify that. So getting back to Gary and Devin, a couple days ago, Devin, he went on one of his social accounts, Instagram or Twitter, one of them, and he said, and I quote, Al Heyman and Floyd Mayweather did not block the fight. In fact, they both green lighted the fight, as Devin Haney put it. 
Now, I didn't know what he meant when he said that. That's why at the time, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to what he said. But then once Bill Haney said out of his own mouth that people have been asking him and Devin, did Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman, that they blocked this fight. That's when Bill Haney came out and he said, Floyd Mayweather told Devin Haney a while ago, not recently, he told him a while ago, once they first start talking about a Devin Haney versus Gary Russell fight, eat him alive. You seen that video I uploaded the other day where Floyd Mayweather told Devin this. So Floyd Mayweather wasn't responding to anyone when he said this, it was actually Devin Haney responding to people implying that Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman was blocking the fight. But it wasn't only Devin Haney and Bill Haney that confirmed that wasn't the case. It was also Gary Russell Jr. himself that said Al Heyman has never blocked this fight. So this situation in particular is not Gary Russell's fault and it has nothing to do with Gary Russell. But what's funny to me is the fact that the people that are defending Gary Russell, not even Gary himself is agreeing with their theories. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and play this clip of what Gary had to say on this and some other things. The stuff with Terrence, it was personal. It was personal, so I was definitely willing, you know, to take that, to take that fight for that number. You know, with, with Devin Haney, that was business. You know what I'm saying? Now you saying I'm trying to duck P.E., saying I'm trying to duck him? Stop playing, y'all. Since you playing with me, tell motherfucking uh, Eddie, tell Eddie to send the contract over. You know what I'm saying? I already spoke to Al. Al said, you know what I'm saying? Well, girl, you know, you, 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 I mean, we have a great business relationship, you know, but you can fight wherever you want. You know, if, if these guys are serious about it, tell them to send you a contract. So send me the contract. I fight you for the 1.5. I'm gonna beat your little ass, shorty. I'm gonna beat your ass. I hope it's worth. It. So you heard it right there from Gary Russell's mouth. He said that Al Heyman has green lighted the fight. So man, I really hope this fight is gonna happen. But now I'm starting to feel it looks like it's not gonna happen. It looks like it's not gonna happen now. And there's rumors that Gary Russell is actually negotiating with Javier Fortuna which is probably most likely true, that's not a good sign. The fact that he's cut off all communications with Bill Haney and Devin Haney. He hasn't answered his phone. Bill Haney has said he's been calling him and he's not responding to text or anything. And once again, it's not like he's having his lawyer speak for him. Nobody on Gary's side is communicating with Haney's people anymore. But we hear these you know, talks that uh, Fatuna is now in the mix. And now Gary Russell is negotiating with Javier Fatuna. So there's a couple questions, but one question comes to mind is, will Gary Russell be getting that 1.5 million to fight against Fortuna? How much is Gary Russell gonna make if he ends up fighting Javier Fortuna? The only thing we know for sure is Javier Fortuna is definitely a safer opponent than a young lion like Devin Haney. But Devin Haney is the champion at 135. So this is why I keep saying, I really hope Gary Russell doesn't walk away from negotiations when it comes to this situation, because you have a shot at the champion at 135. And there's no telling when Gary Russell is going to get another title shot. Remember Gary Russell, he's in his thirties right now. And Gary has been avoided by so many fighters. When Gary Russell came up to 135 and called everyone out in the division, the only person that responded to him was Devin Haney. No one else responded. I remember when Gary Russell was fighting against Jojo Diaz. Jojo Diaz, he admitted at the press conference promoting that fight. He said, everyone has been ducking Gary Russell. I was the only one willing to get in the ring with this man. He said, everyone, he even mentioned names. He said, Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Mares, all of them have been ducking Gary Russell. So the fact that Gary Russell is in his thirties, he's being avoided, you know, and the way negotiations are going with this situation, if this fight doesn't come to fruition, then it's gonna be a bad look. 
is going to be a bad look because see with Devin Haney, if this fight doesn't happen, he's young. So he's got another 10 years at a minimum to find signature opponents. We don't know how long it's going to take for Gary Russell to get another signature opponent in the ring. I mean, just look at the gaps in his career. The last time he was in there with an undefeated signature opponent was Jojo Diaz. And what was that? Two, two years ago, I believe. And then before that, it was Gonzalez and Lomachenko. Two fights that were five to six years ago. So it hasn't been easy for Gary Russell to get big name opponents in the ring. Hopefully there's still a chance that this fight can happen. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.